What's up, guys? It's James here. Welcome back to another video. So we're going to be taking this 2009 13-inch unibody MacBook Pro, and we're going to be rebuilding it and upgrading this thing for my friend. This isn't my MacBook. My MacBook's actually right here, my 2012. We're going to be upgrading this thing, and we're going to, you know, just try to, try to get this thing going. So, you know, let's get into it. Yeah. So now we're at the part, you know, we've got the MacBook turned on. I've got mine over here. I stuck one of my hard drives in it with a copy of OS X uh, Mountain Line on here. Because, uh, you know, we kind of needed that. Anyway, now we go to About This Mac, you know, OS X. we got the Intel Core 2 Duo. I tried swapping my RAM into it. It won't work. 1067 megahertz. Oh, jeez. It didn't, it didn't even want to boot when I put 1333 megahertz RAM in here. And it kept kernel panicking when I put my 1600 megahertz RAM in there. So, yeah. We know it works. I'm going to probably put its original hard drive back in. Just so we can get to the, um, the OS X, the Mac OS installation thing so we can get that started. I have my MagSafe charger here because his is a third party one. Mine has, you know, the, the really, um, sketched out extension cable. But, you know, yeah, we're going to. I just want to get an OS on here that like will let it boot, but it, it is nice to see that you know I do have what I now remember what's on here. I actually have to get this thing a keyboard in order to use this. Now I think that drive has a copy of Mac OS Catalina on it. I have to boot it through this because it didn't even show up on here. So I have to actually boot my MacBook up and see what's on there. So yeah, well um, you know. I'll cut to me getting everything ready. So I managed the bootloader on mine. I have the charger plugged in. My keyboard's bad, so we have to use this. Boot in a Macintosh HD. I'm assuming this is a uh, Mac OS Catalina. I'm going to install OpenCore on here. And then just get the patching stuff made. Install the patcher to the drive. So I can boot that one from this drive. I'll just take all my stuff out of it. Sign out of iCloud. Delete all my stuff. Put the drive in there. Yeah, this is my boy. Uh, with the iFixit keyboard that broke i'm gonna buy another keyboard i'll fix this one and it, it'll get its own video the only part that really sucks is that i really want to give my friend miguel a new um new set of ram sticks but um both sets of ram these are the ones that were actually i don't know why i had them in here these are the 1333 megahertz ones whoops hold on i'm trying to but yeah those ones were in my toshiba laptop originally those ones just caused the one beep at startup i'm gonna try it in these ones this one well in this one this one still has its factory RAM in it right now. It has the um, 1600 megahertz one. Okay, so it does boot up. I'll sign in real quick. So now if I remember correctly, this has a jailbreak tool on it. It does. Legacy iOS kit. I'm actually going to use this real quick. Well, I don't know if I want to mess with it right now, but I was thinking I might actually just take this and um, remove the... Um, well, so I can use it to fix my iPhone 4 that I have, but I might actually just start removing everything from this. Oh, we got the iPhone 7 30. Oh, wait, that's for the 32 gigabyte one. Oh, I thought those activation files for my, um, fuck, what was it? The, um, the 120 gigabyte one. I remember I deleted those because, um, it no longer runs iOS 13. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going to download OpenCore. I probably have to do it from a mirror because I cannot get it to work on Catalina in Safari. So yeah, I'll catch back to you guys. All right, so now we're just, um, we're downloading an open core. I'm gonna try to see if I can just get this thing to think because I just gotta get it to like get the patcher to work so I can boot my 2000, well, my friend's 2009 with the Catalina drive. And then I gotta look for my USB drives because I don't even know where they are. Luckily, this is a weekend and it's literally Friday. So I have the whole weekend to do this, and I got to look for my USB drives. I had them somewhere. I know I had one somewhere, at least. I saw one not too long ago, and I got to look for it. But yeah, we're downloading the patcher. I'm going to try to install it, and then I'm going to try to see if I can just get this thing to boot from that. So yeah, I'll get back to you guys. All right, so now it's booting. It's actually making progress, because I spoofed the... I have it spoofed to think that it's a 2009 MacBook Pro. Well, the hard drive, so it spoofs everything. Open core is working. I have my MagSafe plugged in. You can tell this one is not mine because mine's over here. This is the bottom case off of the 2009. Yeah, this is this is mine. I stopped my RAM in there. It's booting with two gigabytes of RAM. So it's got a Core 2 Duo. 
we'll, we'll see how well this works. All right, so the keyboard lights came on. That means it should be almost done booting, you know? But that, that yeah, you can also tell this one's not mine because mine does not have light up uh, keyboard right now because my keyboard's broken also. If that, that button there, oh, there's the cursor. And boom, we made it to the login screen. So yeah, I'm gonna log in and then we'll get to it. And now we run into our first issue. This, like, what, what, what is the error? I'm gonna just try to do internet recovery. I hope this works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reboot this in internet recovery. We're gonna worry about the installation of macOS later. I can't figure it out, but for now, we're just gonna try to wipe this down and make it look clean again. All right, so now I've wiped it down. It does look a little cleaner. The Apple logo does look kind of weird in the light. Uh, there is a dent in the lid, but also if we flip it to the bottom, I put my bottom case on it because mine has all the feet. Uh, the old bottom case, the one of the feet came off and there, the other ones are starting to just disintegrate. The inside of it looks pretty clean now. You know, the screen's cleaned up. I have mine trying to boot into a partition on a hard drive right now because it has Mac OS Ventura, I think. I might actually be able to get this thing. I might try to mess with the open core, get it on here. I may sacrifice my Big Sur Catalina drive for this MacBook, though. I might actually shut that one down and try to get one set up for this. Oh. Okay, I think it did something because, like, it blinked. Oh, 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 oh. What's it doing? Hold on. We're going we're gonna to actually take a look at this. I'm going to wait for this to finish, um, to finish sliding. Now, I don't have my keyboard hooked up because my keyboard's broken, so I can't even hook it up. Oh, oh. We're back. Oh, this runs Monterey. Perfect. I have stuff on here. I'm going to actually go and format a bunch of stuff. I Since this runs Monterey, I'm pretty sure this is Monterey because of the wallpaper. I mean, here, let me log in. Let's actually see if this is it. Okay. Hold on. Let me actually make sure it doesn't open any windows. Because I sometimes forget when I do a new installation of macOS and disable that. Also, got Tara sleeping right there. Tara. Pretty kitty. Hi. Say hi to the camera. Are you a good girl? Look at you. Right, I'll let you. Oh, oh you can kind of see when the camera lens switches. You can see when the camera lens switches lenses. Yeah, anyway, we'll go back to 1x once it's done. There we go. But yeah, I'm going to wait for this to load. I just logged into it. Now it's just doing this. Um, that, that, you okay? MacBook? Yeah, it's, it's doing that now, so... Hold on, I'm trying to get this. Ah, almost had it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that hard drive I found had Mac OS Ventura on it through the open core patcher. I have... I had it in my 2012, I reformatted everything to make it work with the 2009. So we're going to hit the start button, hold down option. Now I do still have OS 10 Mountain Line on here, so I may actually boot into that real quick, just so I can actually um, disable that. So I'll get back to you guys. All right, so um, we're gonna just try to boot into Mac OS Ventura through the patcher because um, I wanna see how fast this will take. It's not taking too... I don't think it's too bad, honestly. The, and booting this up almost feels like I'm using my 2012. Yeah, I put the Mac OS Ventura in here. I had everything preset to make it think it's on a 2009. Well, just to get it ready for the 2009. And there we go. It's booting up. Um, yeah, we've got the 2012's bottom case on it. My 2012 is here. I do want to fix mine up. Yeah, as you can see, you know, we've got the the, the buttons are different. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to get fixed. I'm getting a new keyboard, new lid and everything. I, let me just log in real quick. All right. So we booted up on, we're on my MacBook. I just, um, sadly had to erase a partition on my SSD because I cannot get into Mac OS Sonoma. So, uh, we have the, I had a Mac OS Ventura USB drive. Now you're probably wondering why I'm even doing this in the first place. Why I'm even messing with my MacBook because, um, as I stated in the previous clip, the um, 2009 
does not work with Ventura or Sonoma right now just because of the um, USB 1.1 driver issues. So there's no trackpad, no keyboard, not even through USB. So we're going to actually... Well, yeah, now I've got this one. I got to rename this partition if I... Wait, not mounted. What the fuck? Well, um, there's an issue. I'm going to try to solve this. We're going to try erasing the disc. I don't even think it's going to work, but we're going to try. We are going to try this. Please work or I'm going to I'm going to have some problems because I really don't want to wipe this. Oh, and of course it failed. Oh, oh my goodness. This is dope. I just wish I could erase a partition right now. Because I have the um, OS 10 mountain lion, but I have a bunch of stuff on here. I, as you can see, I've used like 41.38 gigabytes. I have stuff on here that I don't want to get rid of. I have White Door firmware files. I have iTunes libraries that one of them isn't even mine. I have a lot of stuff on this on this partition. I don't want to get rid of it. But I want to still use my SSD. I'm going to try to look through some stuff. Try to figure out what's wrong. By the way, I don't have... Well, actually, I stated this in another clip. Yeah, my super drive is not in here anymore. It's in the 2009. I'm given... Because my friend, you know, his MacBook's in better shape than mine. I'm going to rebuild this thing, hopefully, in a future video. But I'm going to try to figure some stuff out. What I will actually try to do... I'm actually going to probably reboot this into the... Because um, I do have the EFI boot for the patcher in this drive. So I can boot from the drive. I'm going to try that. It's James here from a couple months after this video was wrapped up. Um, it's July right now. So anyway, the reason why my MacBook was not wanting to format the SSD and disk utility was not the SSD's fault. It was that the hard drive cable on my MacBook was slightly torn, causing it to not want to read the SSD properly. It would still work with physical hard drives. I mean... It would boot into Mac OS Catalina on the original hard drive, but the SSD itself, I guess there's something different with the SSD layout, and it just would not format, it would not boot, it would not write anything to it, so, you know, I have that completely fixed now, but yeah, I just thought I'd kind of explain the issue that happened, so yeah, there you guys go. We're going to try to boot into OS 10 Mountain Lion. I want to actually try to do something, so I'll try, I'm going to try Disk Utility on here, maybe it'll work. Fingers crossed. All right, so I think my SSD is corrupted. So I got my old 500 gig hard drive back in here with Mac OS Catalina. I forgot I had the patcher made to let me boot this from the 2009. So I had to, I even updated the patcher, but I'm downloading the um, Mac OS Monterey uh, DMG file. So I can copy it to USB drive with the patching stuff and get it on the 2009. Because I think this is the newest it'll even work with. So, yeah, um, also, th since this thing has Catalina on it, I may actually try to do some other content with it. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to just, uh, I'll get to it when it's done. So now it's validating the installer integrity, which then next what I have to do is I have to get the patcher ready so it will install to a 2009 MacBook Pro. I've got two things done at the same time, the macOS installer and the iPhone 4. So we're going to we're gonna continue off with the macOS installer now. So I'm just going to click uh, yes. Oh whoops! I gotta re I gotta redo this. Uh, hold on. All right, so we had to rebuild so it would um identify it as it was for the MacBook Pro five comma five, which is the two thousand nine thirteen inch. Now it's just fetching information on local disks. So we want the flash disk, EFI partition, and it'll probably ask for my password. Yep. So let me enter that. I did that wrong. Okay, now it's uh, mounting the partition. It's going to be copying open cords to the EFI partition. And success. Okay. Now, we don't really need my Mac anymore, so we'll just shut it down. I'm going to probably set up my iPhone 4 later. We'll, we'll actually get to that part while Mac OS is installed on the other MacBook. So anyway, I'm going to switch everything over. All right, so we got the 2009 here. Now we hit the power button. I think the speakers on this are broken. And the iPhone 4, because I'm going to leave that plugged in just so it'll charge. All right. Now what we want is uh, we'll go to uh, the newer EFI boot. 
and then install Mac OS Monterey. Now, um, I am sadly going to have to lose the OS 10 Mountain Lion partition, but I can, I can create a new one. So we're just going to let that boot up and I'll get to the install process. All right, so we're at the setup process. So language, English. Mac OS recovery, examining volumes. All right, now we go to disk utility. Continue. Now, oh wait, I just realized everything's working on disk utility. <laughs> so I gotta actually, we'll go to view, show all devices. So the Toshiba one terabyte hard drive erase. Uh, we'll just call this um, Macintosh H, not HZ. We don't want Macintosh Hertz. We want Macintosh HD because this is a hard drive. Now it's unmounting the disk. It'll start the erasing process, creating the partition map. Stung. Show details. Yeah, we're installing Mac OS Monterey on here because, you know, probably one of the good versions. Well, this is only, I think this is only the newest one that the MacBook will work with. And then we we're saying goodbye. Okay, now that part's done. Now we could quit Disk Utility. Install Mac OS Monterey. And we'll just wait for it to load. And I'll, I'll go through the setup process. All right, so now it's installing on the disk. So I thought we might as well set up the iPhone 4. So we'll go to English, United States. And then when it goes to Wi-Fi, let me just enter my Wi-Fi password. Ah, the old keyboard sound. Okay, password's entering. I think I got the right one. Yep. May take a few minutes to activate your iPhone. Now, I don't have to use a SIM card or anything because this is an iPhone 4 CDMA. There's no SIM card. The GSM ones are weird because they require a SIM card. Enable location services, set up as new iPhone. I'll skip the Apple ID for now. I'm probably going to jailbreak this thing with um, Pengu because, you know, I want to have a jailbroken iPhone 4. Don't add passcode. I'll still automatically send. Welcome to iPhone. Get started. And there we are. We're on... We're on iOS uh, 7. And we'll go to about iPhone. Yep. 16 gigabyte iPhone 4. We're actually going to go in and um, uh, usage. I'm going to add battery percentage. I am going to jailbreak this and add some tweaks to it. So like we'll have uh, the, the blur effect on here, you know, so the control center doesn't look like this. I'll try to, I'm going to try to make iOS 7 better on here. Whether I like to use my current location, okay. And if I can, I'll try to get Siri on this thing too. Yeah, I'm gonna just get back to you guys when the Mac OS installer is done. All right, after the second installation, it restarted. Let's see if this works. I will um, hopefully get it working and get it set up. All right, so it's uh, booted up. We're at the progress bar finally. I did notice that the keyboard backlight's not too good. I'm not even going to bother trying to take it apart just because um, it's kind of a pain and I don't want to mess up his keyboard cable because I've messed up two keyboard cables on my own MacBook, but we're getting closer and it's almost done. All right, so we're here now. We're at the setup screen. It finally installed. So I'm going to go through the setup process and get everything uh, set up and we're going to see how well this works. All right, so now we've made it to where it is showing this that is detecting your boot open core from USB or external drive. If you like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive, you can install open core into the internal hard drive. Okay, we will install the patcher. I can't see anything, so I don't even know what it's doing. Yeah, well, well hopefully it works. 
All right, so we're just gonna disable the show open core boot picker. That's all we really need to do. Now we just have to build and install open core. I'll ask install the disk, fetching information on local disks. The Toshiba one, EFI partition. It's probably gonna ask for a password. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Reboot. gonna take a while to shut down I think ah okay at least it doesn't make that weird grinding noise that the old super drive did now we don't want that EFI boot we want this one to be our normal one and Macintosh HD. There we go, and now it's got the newer Mac OS boot screen. So honestly, you know, we've got Mac OS installed. I'll, I'll just cut to when it gets on the um, on the desktop. And if you're wondering what that ding was, that was my iPhone 4 because I have my iMessage sent in. So I'll get to the desktop and, you know, we'll take a look at it. All right, so now we're on the desktop. It finally loaded. Let's go up here to, oh. Oh wow, just clicking on that automatically activates the pinwheel. Fun. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's right, it does. It, oh, it's off by default, I was gonna say. Um, does it not work? Oh, oh, oh no, that's, 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 uh, that's bad, I think. I don't know, I barely ever see that one. Also, it doesn't spin. I just noticed that, oh, shoot. Yeah, my iPhone 4 is really working with iMessage and then my Apple Watch dings at the same time. Okay, finally, about this Mac. Oh dear, this is gonna this is gonna be a painful experience. Mac OS Monterey isn't as bad on mine, but that's because mine also has a um Intel Core 2. I mean doesn't have it this has an Intel Core 2 duo. Also, sorry for the weird effect on the screen. That's just my camera. Okay, it's just taking its sweet time. I'm just gonna cut to when it shows the oh well it's about Finder. I didn't want about Finder. I wanted about this Mac. Oh, now it's loading. Okay, we'll see about this Mac. I'm just gonna cut to it loading. All right, so we made it to the about screen. Mac OS Monterey, 12.7.2, MacBook Pro, Intel Core 2 Duo. Okay, it does read the four gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, it's got NVIDIA GeForce RAM. I mean, uh, graphics, 256 megabytes of v VRAM. What does it say for displays? Okay, it says built-in display. Storage. Macintosh HD here, I can unplug the install USB, memory, support, and it'll show like Apple Care or something. Yeah, now it's it's working. It's It's got Mac OS on it. I actually wanna see how well the camera works. Where, where oh, the photo booth is in the launch pad. That's right, uh, photo booth. Cause I never got to try my MacBook's photo booth abilities because my webcam was broken before I ever got the MacBook fixed. Now this may take a while to load. Shoot. I am gonna download some apps on here for him like Google Chrome probably and other stuff just so he has access to like the Chrome. And then I might actually put like the, um, I'll put stuff on here that he can use I will have to find a way to fix the performance on this. Okay, camera's uh, either not working or it doesn't want to load. It could just be broken. If not broke. Oh, no, 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 no. The light came on. The light came on. The light came on. It's working because the light's on. But I can't see myself. I cannot see myself, but we do know... The webcam works. I mean, just imagine trying to load a Zoom call on this thing. <laughs> 2009 MacBook Pro probably wouldn't work too well. 2012 would work better. 
you know using this it feels like my macbook except for the speed this thing's way too slow compared to mine but you know using the um the actual like you know just the screen and everything the trackpad and everything feels like my macbook i will fix up mine in a video honestly you know i think that's that's about it you know fixed up the macbook for my friend got it fully working now installed the patcher and everything it is a little slow i'll figure that all out get get everything worked out but yeah honestly you know that's about it for this video thank you guys so much for watching please like subscribe I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. She asked what I really know, girl, I'll tell y'all about it. Test I slide until you close, only ride exotic. Only